بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد continue discussing the issue that Ibn Rajab here mentioned رحمه الله تعالى closing the Commentary on this narration of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Taqi laha haythu ma kunta Wa atbi isayyat al-hasanata tamhuha Wa khaliq al-nasa bi khuluq al-hasan Clarifying some important details with regards to the noble and good manners And he closed in saying Qala ba'du ahli al-ilm Some of the people of knowledge they have mentioned Husn al-khuluqi kathm al-ghaydi lillah Wa yadharu talaqati wal-bishri إِلَّا لِلْمُبْتَدِعِ وَالْفَاجِرِ وَالْفَاجِرِ And his statement, it continues, but we are at this point here. He mentioned that some of the people of knowledge, they mentioned that good manners, it is, it is to repress the anger, to repress one's anger for the sake of Allah, and to show a cheerful and a smile, and a cheerful face with a smile, and in the faces of the people, of the brothers, except for... Any to an innovator or to a person who is corrupt and a, a, an apparent and outward sinner. After this, he mentioned what Afu an Zalin illa ta'diban and to pardon those people who slip and make mistakes and they fall into sins and they do things that are incorrect, except for in the case of disciplining somebody. Oh, iqama uh, tahaddin or establishing the legal punishment against them. Wa kafur adha an kuli muslimin aw mu'ahadin. إلا تغيير منكر أو أخذ بمظلمة لمظلوم من غير تعد. He said رحمه الله تعالى also to prohibit harm and to refrain from harming every single Muslim or anyone who has a contract with the Muslims except for in the case of changing the evil and reprimanding and stopping evil or taking somebody to account for their oppression and and getting the right of the oppressor. Uh, of the one who was oppressed back without going to, without transgressing the limits or going to extremes. So here he's mentioning these issues, but he's making exceptions for each one of them. And it's very important to understand these affairs so that a person, he can see clearly any of that which is intended. Because some people, they might misunderstand these affairs or use them yani, to support their misguidance or to support their deviation. And the likes like this, and they would say, how come he, so-and-so, he has bad manners. He doesn't speak to that brother or that person, or he doesn't respect the scholars. But in reality, these are scholars, scholars who are scholars uh, of misguidance. And so they will, be, they will be avoided, and they will be left off, and one will not smile to them, nor will he be pleased with them and be happy with them. And this is not considered from having bad manners, but this is having good manners, and, and having the wala, and the allegiance for the sake of Allah, and the bara. And the, and the disallegiance for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. And he, so this would be based upon the love of Allah. And this is from fearing Allah Azza wa Jal. From fearing Allah Azza wa Jal that one will love what Allah loves and love whom Allah loves. And for the sake of Allah. And the innovations and misguidance is something that Allah did not legislate and He does not love. And ascribing to Allah's religion that which is not from it. And ascribing to the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that which is free. That, that which is free from that. This is from the worst of all sins and the greatest of all crimes. From the worst of all sins and the greatest of all crimes. And the most beloved deeds to shaitan and to try to get the believers to fall into after shirk is innovation. Is innovation in the deen. So therefore to treat the innovator with harshness, this is from the sunnah. And this is the way of the salaf likewise. This is the way of the salaf likewise. And also those people who are corrupt. And this is the point that we're discussing. But he continues as well mentioning that and you need to forgive and pardon those people who make mistakes. Except in the case of disciplining somebody. Except in the case of disciplining somebody. Also, this is a point that we have to discuss and to clarify. Because some people may think, you know, that uh, to discipline a child means that you or to have good manners discipli disciplining the children, for example. That one will never any show a, a type of harshness or that he will always any smile to the child at every case, even whenever the child is being rebellious and disobedient. But rather, there's a time for everything. The origin is that one will be patient with them, and the origin is that one will have good manners with them, which has proceeded in treating the child in the manner that one would like to be treated if he was in his situation. But some children, they do not rectify their self except with discipline. And some children, they have to be disciplined. 
So a believer, he has to know about these affairs and be able to differentiate between the different situations and when uh, he should pardon and forgive and overlook and be silent and when he should take somebody to account in order to discipline them. In order to discipline them. And the one who does this in order to discipline them, this is actually a rahmah and a mercy for them. So that they will not continue upon that foul way. So that they will not continue upon that foul way. So the discipline, yani to, to not pardon somebody to discipline them, this would be with the family. This would be with the children. Or it would be with the criminals likewise. Or somebody who took somebody's right. And the likes like that. We have seen this in the previous classes. That they will be disciplined. That, that, that somebody who's known for taking the rights of others and violating the rights of others and their wealth or in their property or in their honor and the likes like this, if he becomes known for that way, then pardoning this individual is not preferred and not recommended, but rather to take him to account. Or at least to take him to account to the extent where one has authority over him and power over him and then pardoning him after that. After that. La illa ma'a al-qudra wa illa ba'da al-qudra. There's no pardoning except for after having the ability. The ability to take retribution and take revenge. So these are some of the issues that uh, the author he's referring to now and in the closing of this chapter. In our previous class we're discussing the issue of here that one he will pardon. He will pardon the people for the sake of, of Allah. He will, he, will, he, will, uh, rep he will hold his, uh, excuse me, he will uh, الغيظ, He will repress his anger for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal, and then likewise he will smile and be cheerful to the people except for to an innovator. Except for to an innovator or a fajir. Al-Mubtadi' that's known, the one who innovates in the deen of Allah Azza wa Jal. The one who ascribes to the deen of Allah that which is not from it, from creed or belief. That introduces something new that the Prophet and his companions were not upon. Radhi Allahu Anhum. And he, they, they ascribe and he, to the deen that something that the Prophet and his companions were not upon from creed or from worship or from methodology and the likes like this. So this is a foul way. And this person he is on a foul path. So he will be reprimanded. He will be reprimanded. And we have seen the issue of that. It can come to the extent that he will be he will be boycotted and he will be avoided and left off entirely. Or he will not even be given salam. And Salam will not be even returned to him. And he will be left off entirely. And there was an evidence for this issue from the Quran and the seerah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What was that? The story of? Al-Thalatha. Al-Ladina Khulifu. Naam. Fi Ghazwat Al-Tabuk. And there was an obligatory jihad. And there were three of the companions. From them, Ka'ab ibn Malik radiyallahu anhu and two others. And they stayed behind. And they stayed behind. And after that, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he made hajr of them. And he commanded the, the companions to all make hajr of them until the extent that their own family members and wives would not speak to them, would not say a word to them uh, for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. And the benefit came from that. And that was that they repented. And they had great remorse in their heart. And they continued to repent daily. And repent daily and repent daily after some time passed, Allah Azza wa Jal, he accepted their repentance. So therefore, the, the purpose of this reprimand and the, the purpose of this harshness is not to get something off one's chest or not for the whims or the desires because he wants to show some harshness or some hardness or he wants to, 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 to overpower this person or be rude to this person and the likes like this or for some, something that is in, inside of his heart or inside of his soul but rather for a legislative purpose. For a legislative purpose. Shaykh Al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he mentioned the two, the two legislative purposes. Yani for boycotting and, and reprimanding an innovator in this manner. Or even likewise, somebody who is a wicked person, a known and an outward sinner, somebody who is somebody who drinks alcohol, or he commits fornication and it's known and he has no shame, and he becomes known for that. This person likewise, he'll be boycott. He'll, he'll be left off and he will be reprimanded. Yani, but the reason for that was two. Who remembers? The purpose and the wisdom behind the, the legislation of Hajr. To ho hopefully to teach that person a lesson, he will be disciplined and he will repent. He will be disciplined. The, the one who is in, in innovation or the one who is in sin, he himself, he will be disciplined by that and he will be reprimanded by that. And he will uh, realize his mistake and his error and he will return to the truth. So this goes back to those good manners. The, the asal of that, which one? Sent one and good for the people. Wanting good for the people. He wants good for his brother. So then at this time he will boycott him. Not for anything from the dunya. Not because everybody else is boycotting him. Not because he's afraid if he didn't boycott him, somebody will boycott him. Like we see in these days. Wallahu musta'an. But rather for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. For the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. Hoping that that person will benefit. 
hoping to, uh, to, to reprimand him so that he will return to the haqq and so that he will leave off his innovation or so that he will leave off his, his sin and he will cover his faults and he will repent to Allah and he will come back to the ranks of Ahl Sunnah and come back to the path of the righteous. And this is the origin from that. He wants good for him. So and this is the manner to do that. The other reason? Huh? For who? Sir. For, for, the, for the layman and for the, general, for the general Muslims so that they will not be tried by him, so that they will not be misled by him or misguided by his innovation. Maybe he will be somebody who's known for worship or he'll be somebody who has the gift of gab. He's somebody who's able to speak fluently and to, and to memorize some of the texts and they clearly and he has fasaha and the likes like that, but he's upon innovation. But he's upon innovation and he calls to a foul way. So it'll be clarified so that the other Muslims in, in general will not be harmed by him, will not be harmed by him. So this is likewise wanting Wanting good for the people. So this is the first point. Shaykh Al-Islam, he mentioned it, and we read it yesterday, and uh, I forgot to mention any of the work we're reading from with regards to the statements of Shaykh Al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, and this is found in Majmu' Al-Fatawa by Shaykh Al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah in the, the, the 28th volume. And the 28th volume, and it starts, and, he, and we're reading from uh, the, the passages, any portions from page 204, 205, 206, 207 and back on in, into 220 and so on and so forth, 221. And he, there's a, a whole great benefit from here. He mentions these affairs and we just picked a few of them to be suitable for the points to be established in, in these classes. And whoever would like to get more details and he can read and he, for himself and find these affairs. So he began and he mentioned al hajr ala wajh al-tadib. And this is the one that is legislated to make the, the hajr for the purpose of al tadib to discipline them, to discipline them. And so it'll be a means to discipline them. And then likewise, it means to protect the Muslims and the creed of the Muslims and the deen of the Muslims so that uh, the, the innovation will not be spread. And uh, likewise, with regards to the one who is corrupt and evil, and the one who is an apparent sinner, an open sinner, and the one who has no shame from Allah Azza wa Jal, until he doesn't even hide his sins, and he sins apparently and publicly and likes like this, and he becomes known for that, so that he will be reprimanded, and so that he will leave off that way, and hopefully he will repent by finding that the believers are not pleased with him, and they're not happy with him, and they don't want to associate him, rather they'll cut ties with him for the sake of Allah, because of his foulness, because of his sins, because of taking alcohol, or drinking alcohol, or selling alcohol, or because he's, he's, he's on drugs, or he's having girlfriends, and the likes like this and he becomes known for that way and he's apparent with that then this, would, this is the, the way that he will be treated in this manner hoping, hoping that it will benefit him hoping that he will benefit him and likewise so that the, 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 the general Muslims would not you know, be tried by him as well would not be tried by him as well because you know, just the same way that you know, al-adwa al -adwa is being near somebody that, that has a disease and it could you know, by the decree of Allah Tra transmit to another person by the decree of Allah. The people of knowledge from them, Shaykh Uthaymeen, rahimahullah, he mentioned that al adwa with, yani, with the people is even more, even more severe. And somebody who has foul manners, who is upon a foul way, is even more severe, meaning it's contagious. That the, the, the crimes that they're upon and the sins that they're upon that they call to, and the misguidance that they're upon and that they call to, it, it can corrupt the heart. Easy. A person, he can be affected by them quickly and his disease can be transferred from that person's heart and his corrupt understanding and his innovations can go into another individual who accompanies him and who is around him and likewise the one who is involved in sins and shahawat and desires that are impermissible if he continues to, to accompany him he can be tried by him and be affected by him and fall into those sins along with him and become corrupted like him so this is from the reason why the prophet sallallahu commanded us to be careful who we take as companions <laughs> That verily a man, he's upon the way of his companion. He's upon the deen of his companion. So let one of you look to who he mix with. Or let one of you look to who he takes as a friend. So therefore, any this person, maybe he has already some good manners, but he is found. But he's found in his deen. He's found in his deen either from, from way of shubuhat or from way of shahawat. So it be clarified so the people are not tried by him. So the people are not tried by him. But there were some very important points that Shaykh al Islam he mentioned likewise, rahimahullah ta'ala, and that is that this affair here, with regards to the mubtadi' with regards to the fajr or the fasiq, is that this is an act of worship. To, to reprimand him. To reprimand him is an act of worship. إذا رأى إذا من رأى منكم منكرا فليغيره بيده. 
فلم يستطيع فبلساني فلم يستطيع فبقلبه وهذا أضعف الإيمان and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned in the, fa- in the famous narration that whoever uh, amongst you, he sees an evil, then let him change it with his hand. And if he's not able to, then with his tongue. And if he's not able to, then in his heart. And this is the weakest level of faith. So therefore, I need to reprimand these people is an action of worship. It's an action of worship. It's a, legis- it's a, le- it's a legislation. It's pleasing to Allah azza wa jal. So therefore, it has to be done properly. It has to be done according to the conditions of worship. What are they? Ah, it has to be for the sake of Allah Azza, Azza wa Jal alone. And this is what he has mentioned before, not for desires and not for the whims. And many people, they fall into this. And they fall into this trap, the trap of shaitan. And they will, they will boycott people and individuals. And they will, uh, they will reprimand them and the likes like this. But they're not doing it for the sake of Allah. They have all ulterior motives. And shaitan has misled them. And they are doing it based upon hawa and desires. And then likewise, many of them will do it based upon ignorance as well. This type of reprimand and commanding the good and forbidding the evil. It must be in a manner. Somebody, he must command the good in a manner that is good. Some people, they will command the good and the commanding of the good is evil. The, com- the commanding of the good is evil. The way that they command the good is evil in reality. The way that they command the good is evil in reality. Or they prohibit the evil in an evil manner. And this is not correct. Rather, the one that and he commands with good in a good manner. Oh, and, he, and he prohibits the evil in, in, in a good manner, in a manner legislated and properly. And this has to be in accordance to, to the sunnah. And this means that he has to do it sincerely for the sake of Allah, not for his desires or his whims. Or not for anything other than the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jalla to follow his deen. And for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and have ghira in his heart for the religion of Allah. And for the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then even after this, this condition is not sufficient. Rather likewise it must be... In accordance to to the Sunnah, in accordance to the Sunnah, Shaykh al-Islam he mentioned very important importance with regards to this, and how, how we know how to, to to reprimand somebody or to boycott somebody, an innovator for example, to, to boycott him and to leave him off, and, and, and to deal with him harshly, and for the sake of Allah, somebody could do that for the sake of Allah, yeah, and, he, and, and this is clear. But how would it be according to the Sunnah? Uh, what, is the, what is the criteria here for the, this action to be according to the sunnah for it to be considered mashru'an legislative uh, there's a great fundamental principle that he mentioned and he clarified meaning that uh, uh, he has to close look to the masalih and the mafasid. He has to look to the masalih and the mafasid. He has to look to the benefits and the harms. Naam? This is a famous, well known principle from the principles of the Sunnah. Min usulis adawa salafiyya. Yani that, uh, that to prohibit harm takes precedence over bringing about good. Over bringing about good. So, no doubt to treat an innovator harshly, this is good. But if this is going to bring about more harm than's already there, no doubt the innovator, he's bringing harm to the community. Wherever he's going with his innovation, he's bringing harm. Huh? So to boycott him, in order for him to be reprimanded, in order for the people to know about him, this is beneficial and good. But what if that didn't work? What if somebody boycotted him and in reality he's the one who's boycotted? Because of his weakness in numbers or in knowledge or his weakness in, 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 in society and his strength and the likes like that then it would not be legislated because it would bring about more harm. It would bring about more harm. And this is what we were reading yesterday. That he's saying, فَإِنْ كَانَتَ الْمَسْلَحَةُ فِي ذَلِكَ رَاجِحَ بِحَيْثُ يُفْضِي هَجُرُهُ إِلَى ضَعْفِ الشَّرِّ وَخِفَّتِهِ كَانَ مَشْرُوعًا That if the hajr is most beneficial or the benefit with regards to that is greater until the extent that by leaving this person off will lead to the weakness of the evil that he has. It will weaken the evil. The evil that he has will be less. The evil that he has will be less than it will be legislated. In this, in this instance. Now he said, It's not from the Sunnah. He said, but if it is in the case that the one who was being left off and boycotted and not him and not anybody other than him likewise is, is changed 
or is leaving off the sin or taking the reprimand, whether the evil would increase by boycotting him or treating him harshly and the likes like this. And the one who is uh, doing the boycotting, he is weak himself until the extent that the evil and the harms are more than the benefits and the goods and the good, then it's not legislated. Then it's not legislated. Then it's not legislated. This is very important. This is not legislated. It has come to me from uh, Sheikh Abdullah and Najmi, Hafizahullah. He mentioned about one time, and uh, I just remembered, but this is a mithal, yani, wadih, that uh, there were some uh, brothers uh, upon the Sunnah in a Muslim, in a Muslim country, in a Muslim country, in, in the masjid. That, that they had uh, sometimes the imam would be uh, a brother from the sunnah and another times he would be somebody else who's upon innovation and the, the, the masjid is not you know, stable it's not a stable masjid so they would go for the jumu'ah and if it was somebody there that they could bear his khutbah they would stay there and they would attend and if the, the khatib came and he was from the he was one of the people that you know, they had considered from the hizbis then they would turn around and leave and he, because of his innovation so if the innovator came, if somebody from the Sunnah came or somebody that was any closer to the Sunnah came, they would attend the, the Jumu'ah. They would attend the Jumu'ah. And if a person who they considered an innovator or Hizbi and the likes like this came, then they would get up and leave. They would get up and leave. And they asked uh, Shaykh Zayd about this. Zayd al-Madkhari, rahimahullah ta'ala, and he said what the, the, the innovation is what they're doing. Getting up and leaving like this is the innovation. Because from the Sunnah is to a uh, Salat, the, the prayer the, with Ahl Sunnah, the Ahl Sunnah, they pray behind every wicked man and every righteous man. The prayer is, is authentic, the prayer is correct behind every wicked man and every righteous man. This is the way of the Sunnah. So if a wicked man is placed in the, in, in the position to pray and to lead the prayer, and this is the, this is the outcome, a believer who will not turn his back on them and go away. He will pray with the Jama'ah and he will, and he will he just have to deal with the situation and ask Allah to rectify. So, so this is any, an indication that, that a believer he has to be cautious that he can fall into innovation himself and he can be the one making the mukhalifah because of, uh, of this extremism, because of extremism that is this, this affair here that's not checked by knowledge, that's not checked by knowledge. And no doubt if a person's innovation takes him out of Islam, that's a different story. The one will not pray behind a disbeliever, but the point here is that praying behind every righteous and every wicked Muslim. Muslim, so long as his innovation did not take him out of Islam, he doesn't have the innovation, uh, for example, of calling on the graves or making tawassal to the graves and the likes like this, and it's lesser than the, these affairs, he's still a Muslim, even though he's an innovator and he's leading the prayer or leading the Jumu'ah. This is what a, a believer he will have to attend. He will not get up and leave in the middle of the prayer or whenever he walks up for the Jumu'ah. This is not from the way of the people of the Sunnah, where they used to attend the prayer behind the Hajjaj. And, 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 and the likes and the, and the Jumu'at and the likes behind the, these individuals that were known for foulness were known for foulness so this is the way of the people of the Sunnah so the one that is legislated is the one that is going to bring about good and the benefit is going to be greater and if that's not the case then it's not legislated then it's, then it's not legislated and these, these points are very important for uh, the believers to understand and especially in, in our days and in our society and also to differentiate between the people of innovation and the laymen who are affected by them and to treat everyone accordingly and to treat everyone accordingly in the beginning uh, or the muqaddimah sahih muslim uh, which is known for his narrations about the clarification of mustara hadith and jarh adil yani he mentioned a narration to aisha radiyallahu anha and she said umirna an nunazil an-nas manazilahum we're commanded to put everybody in their proper place. We're commanded to put everybody in their proper place. So to treat an innovator like the people of the Sunnah, this is wrong. To, to treat, like, like he said, innovator, you don't smile to him. You don't give him the good manners and the courtesy that you give the brother from the Sunnah or the one who was a layman from the people of the Sunnah. But likewise, the people who, of the Sunnah who are originally their layman and they're from the people of the Sunnah. And if you ask them, oh, what is their creed? And they'll say, my creed is the creed of Abu Bakr and Omar. If you ask them that. But then if you look into details, they have, they have, they have, uh, they have mistakes and they have errors because they, they have been affected by, they have been affected by the people of innovation. But they're laymen, they're not callers. And, and they're not really upon that innovation. They're just affected by them. So then a believer, he will differentiate between this one and that one and treat them differently. 
and treat them differently. These are the ones that will, a person who will be courteous with them and he will, he, will, he will pardon them and he will overlook them and he will want good for them and he will try to advise them time after time. One, two, three, four, five times being patient with them, giving them a tape, giving them a CD, giving them a book, giving, inviting them to class, inviting them to dinner, to food in order to bring up the, 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 the knowledge and the lights like this because they're lacking usul. They're lacking usul. And many of them, if they learn the usul, wallahi, they'll go straight. But for... for, for Yani, uh, Wallahu al-Musta'an, some of the people, they don't teach them the usul. They're just ready to drop them. And they're ready to just, that, that's the easy part. And to, to, to say, Allah, he said this, and the Prophet said this. You don't like it? He, he's an innovator. He's an innovator. Like this lad. Yani, their hands are on the edge. And their, their, their hands are on the edge. And instead of coming over there to giving a hand and try to pull him up, they snap on, on, they step on his fingers and push him down into the fire. Or push him down into the well. This is not the way of the Prophet Sallallahu This is not the way of the companions. They wanted good for the people. And they strove hard. The Prophet Sallallahu he was harmed because he wanted good for the people. He was harmed. He was harmed physically. Physically. He even mentioned about a Prophet. What do you say about a Prophet? Who his people ha have, have cut his head until he's bleeding. Have cut his head until he's bleeding. And he says, Allahumma ikfir li qawmi fa inam la ya'lamun. Oh Allah, please forgive my people. Verily, they don't know. He made an excuse for them. And this even happened to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He is harmed in the path of da'wah. And he for the greater good. And this is known in the, in the issue uh, whenever he went to a ta'if. Whenever he went to ta'if, uh, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentioned that it was the hardest of his days. The hardest of his days. And he went there to call them to Allah. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And what did they do? They called out the fools and the children and the likes. And they came out there throwing rocks at him. Throwing rocks at him until, uh, until uh, Zayd ibn Harith is blocking him and the likes like this, blocking him and, and, and the Prophet is being mocked and, and, and rocks are thrown at him until he's bleeding. Until he's bleeding. And then whenever he gets on the outskirts of the town, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Jibril, he came and he said, I have the angel of the, of the Jubal. I have the angel of the mountains with me right now. And if you like, he said, if you like, then I can cause these mountains to crush them right now. He said, no, no, rather I hope that from their loins will come people who worship Allah alone with no partners. I hope from, the, from their loins, from their children. And he look into the greater good in the end. Maybe they, maybe they refuse me, but inshallah, the da'wah will reach their family members. The da'wah will reach their loins. It is, it, it, inshallah, Allah will benefit them. Allah will guide them. Like this. And, and, until, and today, what, what, is the, what, what is the situation of life? Ah. <laughs> Are there disbelievers there? No, there's no disbelievers there. There's only Muslims there. And they're, they're establishing the, 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 the shahadatayn, they're establishing the sunnah. So this is the case, and to want good for them, to want good for them. The, the laymen from the Muslims, uh, the, the students of knowledge specifically, and those brothers who have been guided to the sunnah, those brothers, maybe they're not from students of knowledge. Maybe they never said, well, Sheikh so-and-so. Maybe they've never even been overseas. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opened their hearts to da'wah salafiyyah. And, and granted them the blessing to be able to see the truth, the obligation of following the way of the companions, and the obligation, and, and they've learned usul, and they've learned foundations, and they learned how to pray. As the Prophet ﷺ prayed, they learned tawheed and the difference between shirk. They learned the dangers of bid'ah. They learned these things in their homes and in their masajid here in America. These uh, other Muslims, many of the Muslims, wrote the majority of them, they're lacking these usul. They don't have these usul. So therefore, to have some care in the heart for them, for our, for our Muslim brothers to want good for them, to try to be a means to bring the khair to them, to clarify for them, to show them the right way, to teach them w w with evidence and with proof and with good manners and conducts, and before that with a good intention, with a good intention. And this is, uh, this is what is incumbent upon, upon, the, uh, upon the ummah today. What is incumbent upon us, upon students of knowledge and upon the brothers who have been, uh, been blessed to come to the da'wah and to see it clearly and to know. Allah, he said about his prophet, That if you are harsh and hard-hearted, they would fled from you. And if the prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was harsh to his companions. Every one of them, made, every time one of them made a mistake. And we know that there are times and evidences in the Quran and in the Sunnah, many times that, that sometimes the companions, one of them will make a mistake. One of them will make a mistake. One of them will do something wrong. One of them will do something wrong. The, the, the example of those who stay behind, they did something wrong. Allah, he forgave them. He forgave them. There's another one who betrayed the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ibn Abi Belta'ah, that he gave the, the, the Kufar, the information of the coming of the Prophet to, to invade them. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he checked his affair first and then forgave him. And then for, looking into his situation and the lights like this, and he, so, and, he, and he, that's a great affair. That's a great affair. So you need to want good for the people and, and to strive to bring good to the people. This is incumbent. And this is, this, this is the way. 
and uh, to have knowledge, to differentiate between these individuals and, and to not mix them up. Because to show honor and to respect an innovator who is a full-blown innovator and he's an, and the likes like this, this is completely wrong. There is no compromising in the deen of Allah Azza wa Jal. There is no compromising in the deen of Allah Azza wa Jal. But as for the laymen who are affected by them and they're not truly from them, then these people, yani, they require for somebody to call them with gentleness and with kindness, with rifq with, with rif, rif and with lean, to invite them, yani, to, to bring them close and the likes like this. And maybe you'll hear something from them that's wrong. You don't, you're not harsh with them. You'll slowly, you'll slowly check it out and you'll see the, the errors that they have in creed or in methodology and manhaj. Maybe some of them will say something bad about the Mamluka Arabia Saudi, or maybe some of them, any many of, which many of the people they do today. And this is a clear sign they have been affected by the Ikhwan Muslimin, by Ikhwan Muslimin, waliyadu billah. But if he's a layman, if he's a layman, you try to help him, you try to call him, you try to show him the good that they have, and likewise clarify to him the Sunnah with regards to this and the dangers of the one who speaks about the Muslim ruler outwardly, and that this is not the way of the Salaf, as Salih. And to clarify with detail and to hope good for him, or somebody who's affected by Jama'at al Tabligh, or somebody who's affected by the Sufiyyah, and the likes like this, and they have innovations with them, but they're just laymen. They're just laymen. You need to, to, to want good for them and to try to help them. This is what is incumbent. This is what is incumbent. And uh, any to, 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 to any emphasize again, it has to be for the sake of Allah. First, with a good intention. Then, then this, this, this uh, as, as for boycotting or reprimanding and the likes like that, then this has to be in accordance to the masalih and the mafasid. The masalih and the mafasid. And, and wallahi, he, he mentioned it yani, so clearly. And I just read it again because it, it, it's something that it needs to be known. And it needs to be spread. وَهَذَا الْهَجْرِ يَخْتَلِفُ بِاخْتِلَافِ الْهَاجِرِينَ And this boycotting, it differs with regards to the different situation of those who are boycotting. فِي قُوَّتِهِمْ وَضَعْفِهِمْ وَقِلَّتِهِمْ وَكَثْرَتِهِمْ According to their strength and their weakness and their numbers, whether they are many or few. Whether they are many or few. فَإِنَّ الْمَقْسُوبِ بِهِ زَجْرُ الْمَحْجُورِ وَتَأْدِيبُهُ وَرُجُوَ الْعَامَّةِ عَنْ مِثْلِ حَالِهِ And because the intent from this whole affair is to reprimand that individual and to discipline him and for the layman to come away from him and to be aware of his situation. So if none of this is going to happen, if none of this is going to happen, it's not legislated. It's not legislated. It's not legislated. So for example, again, in the community there, or the, where the, where the Ahlul Sunnah is weak, Ahlul Sunnah is weak, there, there are five of them, for example, in a whole community, a masjid, Jumu'ah is packed. The masjid is packed on Jumu'ah, for example. And it's, it's three, four, five of them, they're being guided to the Sunnah. They're learning about a Salafiyyah. And they're learning the difference between Shirk and Tawheed. They're learning the difference between Sunnah and Bid'ah. They're learning the methodology of the Salaf and the Athar. Uh, of the Sahaba and the Tabi'een and the likes like this and they start to notice in the ranks in the masjid things are going down differently things are going down differently than what they're reading about and what they're learning and, and, and the likes like this and the Imam he's doing it differently and the people in the Jama'ah is doing it differently and things are and, and then come to find out many of the things that they're involved in are innovations but not everybody in the masjid is going is along with them many of them are laymen and many, many of them are even good brothers and they're looking for goodness but they're ignorant and the like like this. So if, the, if those few brothers were to go against the idara of that masjid and to, and to display enmity to his, towards them, what would happen to them? Huh? They would get kicked out of the masjid. Now what's going to happen to their da'wah? The, those brothers right there, they have usul that everyone in that masjid is in need of. They have usul, Allah bless them with this usul and, 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 this, and this knowledge that everyone in that masjid is, need, is in need of. And, and Allah favored them with that. And by, by not applying this issue properly, they are prohibiting their brothers from that. Now they're not able to mix with them. And now, and now on top of that, the Adara is going to clarify to them, those five brothers right there, oh, they're extremists. Wahhabiyyah. They're Wahhabiyyah. They're Wahhabiyyah. Oh, they're extremism. Or oh, they're following Sheikh so-and-so, like, like, like this, and Ahmed Khaliya, or Jama'a Jamiya. And they'll make names like this, and, and this Awam, they heard these names before, and they're scared. And they hear about that, Hawthi Billah. And the likes like this, and so now they will be, and they will be and like they're left alone, and they will be considered strangers, and, and nobody will want to talk to them or touch them, and, and the likes like this, and, and then they have no any yani, benefit for themselves or for the community. But if they're patient, if they're patient, and uh, they just go to the masjid, for example, they go for the five daily prayers whenever they can. They go for the five daily prayers whenever they can, and they mingle with the people and the musalin, those who are praying along with them. And they find out the ones that they can talk to and they can, that, that, that listen to them. And the ones that they feel like have, a, have an open ear and a good heart. 
and they like like this and they build a relationship with them and they start calling them and they invite them to their house for dinner and they invite them to 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 to, to go to go eat in the, this brother's store to come here and they introduce them to another brother like this and they connect together and they advise why, why don't we read a book together come over to my house inshallah we're going to get together us uh, and three more brothers we're going to read a book and you pick a surah thalatha for example or you pick kitab al tawheed for example or, or the issue that he is having a problem with you bring it up or have the brother bring it up and clarify for him in a good manner with a good intention then this person next thing you know huh, you're not five no more how many are you six he's got a wife <laughs> he's got a wife seven and the women have down with two many times the women they will be calling the sisters and, and the sisters will call their husbands yani subhanallah the benefit that will come by being patient by being patient so, but to make it clear in this situation, and I say this and we, and we praise and we thank Allah because in the masjid that we're sitting in and anybody who has only come to this masjid or is only familiar with masjid al-Tawheed, he might have no clue of what's being spoken about. But in reality, the masjid are many and the situation of them are, are, are very bad, are very bad, are very bad. And there's many, many brothers who are going through this situation right now. They're going, I know them. I used to be myself in, 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 in these situations. So, so this is something that's very important. It must be clarified. So if he's going to be patient with him, because if he's going to make enmity with them, what's going to happen? It's already cleared. It's already clarified. So how does he make, how does he be patient with them? Go, go to the, the ones who are the head innovators, any of the heads of the place, and, they're, and they're full, he's a full-blown innovator, truly misguided. The Imam, he's a Khwani 100%, or he's Ash'ari, his Aqidah, he'll say it about himself, he's Ash'ari, and the likes like this. And then if you look at his methodology, he's following the methodology of Khwan Muslim, and he's all mixed up, and the likes like this, and everybody can teach in the masjid except for you, and everybody can talk in the masjid except for somebody from the Ahlul Sunnah, and the Tabligh can come, and the Rafidi can come, and this one can come, and they're all good. Marhaban, marhaban, give the khutbah. But you try to bring a brother who studied from Jamis Lamia, for example. No, 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 no. Wahhabi. Wahhabi. And how do, you do, how do you deal with this guy? How do you deal with this guy? This is the, this is the point. And he, because if you're going to go head on with him, you're going to lose. You're going to lose in this situation. This is what he's talking about here. Huh? Because the person here is weak. He's weak. He's overcome. They're going to lie on him. They're very treacherous and they're deceitful. And they'll trick and they'll maneuver the people. And they will all be against you. And they'll all be against you. So what do you do? Go to him and shake his hand and go out to eat with him and have tea. And, be, and become his, his partner and right-hand man. Ha, <laughs> la, la, that's not the intent either. That's not the intent either. At this time, there's a, there's a, a way to deal with it. And we have taken this way before and it's in one word. It's in one word. We discussed this issue before. Mm. One word, Arabic word. Ahsant, al mudarat al mudarat al mudarat so there's two words any that come into play in this situation one of them is is, is haram and impermissible in, in, in every situation and one of them is legislated and good and, and this is the required way the first way which is haram and impermissible is al mudahana what do law tu dihinu fa yudhinun they wish that you will compromise so they will compromise you worship our god today and we worship your god tomorrow you don't say nothing about our gods and we don't say nothing about your god and we're all good and we are, we're all good. What do? They wish that you would compromise with them so they'll compromise with you. And they'll be quiet about what you disagree and we'll be quiet about what you disagree and like this and everybody's happy. And everybody's happy. And this was mentioned to the Prophet and they presented that to him. What was revealed at this time? I don't owe you disbeliever. Say to them, oh you disbeliever, I do not worship what you worship. And you do not worship what I worship. And I will never worship what you worship. And I do not worship the way that you worship. <laughs> I don't worship what you worship, nor the way that you worship. Uh, you have your deen and I have my deen. So this is the case here. So, but he, in this situation, he's not going to make mudahana. And he's not going to compromise his deen to have a position with this person or to be safe from his evil. Right? So and mudahana, it means to give up a portion from the deen in order to obtain a portion of the dunya. In order to obtain, a, he, will, he will back down from a, a right of the deen. He will leave off something that is an obligation upon him or, or required for him. He will leave it off and back down from that in order to have the dunya. In order to have the dunya. Like for example, he'll be silent about his stuff in order to get money from him. He'll be silent about, about the imam's innovation in order to, to be able to be on the board. 
and to get money or to have a position or to have a rank like this. And he'll be silent about him like this. And let it, why? Because he wants to, and he, to call the people or, or because he wants a position? Because he wants a position or because he wants money. This is haram. This is called mudahana. La mudahana tafidinillah. There's no compromising in the deen of Allah. There's no compromising in the deen of Allah. On the other hand, there's another issue that we have to differentiate between. It's called, differentiate between. It's called al-mudarat. Al-mudarat, it has a general meaning of courtesy. Of courtesy. But what is intended here is that you give up something from the dunya in order to obtain the deen or in order to maintain the deen. You give up something from the dunya in order to maintain and the deen or even to maintain some of the dunya likewise. To back down from some of the dunya in order to maintain the deen or to preserve the deen or to preserve some of the dunya. So for example, in this situation, he will not make any compromise with that imam. But what would he do? He'll make mudarat with him. If he comes to the masjid and he happens to bump into him at the door, for example, what would he do? Uh, he give him salam, he'll give him salam back. And he'll salam alaykum, how's everything's good? And he'll go. Like that. He'll keep it short and brief. He will give him salam, maybe even give him a smile. This is not mudahana, this is mudarat. He's giving a smile. He doesn't want a smile on his face. Illa al mubtadi. Ibn Rajab, what did he say? Talaqatul waj wal bishr. Illa al mubtadi. But at this time, in this situation, He's going to smile in his face briefly and in order for, to, to be safe from his harm. So that now he can enter the masjid, he can pray with the people and he can call the people to the good that he's upon and he can be able to, to benefit from the, uh, the obligatory prayer and from the Jumu'ah and the likes like this and, and, and be it with the Jama'ah and to be with the Jama'ah. So he will smile and, and keep it moving. He will give salam and keep it moving. But he will not attend the lesson. He will not attend the lesson yeah, and he's not going to go to his class and attend the lesson and take notes and, and, and write it down and, and benefit and review. Nah, nah, he's going to go to the masjid and pray and then worry about calling the people and bringing the people that he can to the goodness and calling the people that he can. And then whenever he gets strength and enough people along with him, then after that he can talk to the people of knowledge and see about establishing a masjid himself or all of them moving to another community together or something like this. But whenever they're weak, this is the case. He will not, he will go to the prayer, he will go to the Jumu'ah, and plus, for example, if he's in this state, he can listen to the Jumu'ah, he has usul. He has usul. So if there's mukhalifat, if there is a qa'id, batila that's being taught and being spread in the, in the Jumu'ah, after Jumu'ah, he'll call those brothers and he'll call, look, he, 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 the Prophet said, he, he said this, he said this, he said this, the, the companions, they said this, and this, and clarify for them. And, if, he, and if, a, if a person, even, he might not even have to mention that, that person, and he, that the Imam, he said that. He can just mention the proofs and the evidences clearly to that individual and then he will see that this is opposite to that. And this is the way of many of the people of knowledge. Sometimes a person, he'll go straight. So-and-so is an innovator. Other times a person, he will just look at the innovation of so-and-so and he clarify those also clearly and now everybody can see them. And now he will say himself, so-and-so is an innovator. And he will learn the usul until he himself is able to see if these people are not upon the sunnah. And this is the best way. This is the best way to teach and to cultivate and to raise the people until they're able to see themselves the innovation. Until they're able to see themselves the falsehood. Like this, as for just saying so-and-so is on falsehood and this one is on falsehood and so-and-so the son of so-and-so is this. Like this, he knows that person, he knows that person. But as for the usul that they made mukhalifah with, then they don't know that. They don't know that. So to raise them in this manner is the best way. Although no doubt sometimes somebody will mention his name. He will mention his name, that he is an innovator by his name. Mention the na his name and the name of his father like that. So it's clear and he's known in, 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 in situations. But you know, the point is that this has to be based upon knowledge. And it has to be done clearly with a good intention. And, uh, and in this manner. So he'll make mudarat. He'll make mudarat so he can continue to be amongst the people. So he can continue to be uh, amongst the people and to benefit you know, the Muslims you know, in, in his community. And... <clears throat> I hope this is clear. Wallahi. Barakallahu fikum. Wallahu al mustaan. He mentioned many uh, issues like this, likewise. Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah ta'ala, in the same book on page 217, because we discussed the issue of the Mubtadi'ah. He says, Wal Fajr. Wal Fajr. Who was the Fajr? Aradi Yafjur. ويخرج من طاعة الله عز وجل يعني يفجر يعني he just goes away and he has no concern and no care and he's somebody for example who drinks alcohol and somebody for example who's blasting music and somebody for example who ha is committing zina and it's public 
it's public. This one, he's the fajr. This one, he's the fajr. But the one who does it publicly, or the one who commits fujur, al fujur, lying. Lying is fujur. And lying is different. Lying on the Prophet is, is, is the worst. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Man kathaba alayhi muta'amidan falyatabawat maqadu min anar. Uh, then whoever lied on me on purpose and let him prepare his seat and they have fire. Lying on the scholars after that. Lying to the scholars or lying about the scholars after that. Fujur. Fujur. This is wickedness and evil. This is, don't, don't be deceived. Anybody who did it. Whatever his rank may be. If he lies on the scholars or to the scholars about the scholars, he's a fajr. Uh, until, until he repents. Until he repents. Uh, so, so, so lying likewise or drinking alcohol or, or taking riba. Or, or selling these affairs, doing drugs, selling drugs. And if these people are two types, one of them is apparent with it and he has no shame. The other one, he's hidden. The other one, he's hidden. And he may be somebody, for example, he will go to the extent that he will commit fornication with the other villa and then he, the people will know it and he will not have shame. And he'll be like, yeah, who, so-and-so got married. No, no, that's, not, that's his girlfriend. And he'll be, he has no shame like that. What do you have to be He could come to that extent. He could come to that extent. Another person, on the other hand, he fell into the same sin. But he, at least he kept it, he kept it quiet. He kept it quiet. He didn't dis display it. And he fell into fornication, but, but he, he, he didn't uh, display that. And he had shame, uh, at least. And he knows he's wrong, and he felt bad about it. And, and even though he fell into it, or he's falling into it, he's not displaying it. He's not displaying it. So these people, they're different. Shaykh Islam again, he's asked about this affair as well. He says, and he, he was asked about Sha'arib al Khamar. Sha'arib al Khamar. And he, you sallam alayhi, wa hal idha sallam rudda alayhi, wa hal tashi'u janazatihi, wa hal you kafar idha shaka fi tahrimiha. And he about the one who drinks alcohol. The one who drinks alcohol, should, should one give him salam? The one who drinks alcohol, should one give him salam? Or if he gives salam, should you return the salam to him? And he, we could make this, and he, along with this, and he, alcohol, all of the major sins. Huh? Drinking alcohol is a minor sin. Huh? The five day prayers wipes it away. Huh? No, this one requires toe, but it's a major sin. This is a major sin. Uh, so all of the major sins, like, and we could understand a similar ruling. Do you give him salam? If he gives salam, do you re return the salam? If he dies, do you follow his janazah? Do you follow his janazah? This is what he's talking about here, right? You, 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 you show good manners to, the, to them. That's from the good manners, right? إِلَّا لِلْمُبْتَدِعِ وَالْفَاجِرِ Except for the mubtadir, the innovator and the fajr, the evil person. So this is the issue. He said, فَأَجَابَ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ مَنْ فَعَلَ شَيْءٍ مِنَ الْمُنْكَرَاتِ كَالْفَوَاحِشِ وَالْخَمْرِ وَالْعُدْوَانِ وَغَيْرِ ذَلِكَ فَإِنَّهُ يَجِبُ الْإِنْكَارُ عَلَيْهِ بِحَسَبِ الْقُدْرَةِ بِحَسَبِ الْقُدْرَةِ He said, رحمه الله that whoever does anything from these uh, major sins and he like فَوَاحِشِ like fornication and drinking alcohol and uh, transgressing the rights of others and he violating their rights and their wealth or their property or their honor or their blood نعم? And, and other than that he said فَإِنَّهُ يَجِبُ الْإِنْكَارِ it is an obligation to reprimand him and to prohibit him and to stop him according to one's ability. According to one's ability. Like the Prophet, he said, Like the Prophet, he said that if one of you sees an evil, then let him change it with his hand. And if he's not able to, then with his tongue. And if he's not able to, then with his heart. And this is the weakest type of faith. فَإِنْ كَانَ الرَّجُلُ مُتَسَتِّرًا بِذَلِكَ وَلَيْسَ مُعْلِنًا لَهُ إِنْكَارَ وَلَيْسَ مُعْلِنًا لَهُ أَنْكَرَ عَلَيْهِ سِرًّا وَسَتَرَ عَلَيْهِ Listen to this. Huh? Shaykh al Taymiyyah, page 217, volume number 28. Some of the brothers, they, 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 they asked about the, the, the book and the page number yesterday. May Allah reward them. I forgot to mention. But that shows you any the determination and the desire to learn. Now, so this, he, he says, Rahimahullah uh, ta'ala, if the individual was doing that in a concealed, in a concealed manner, what did he mention? Fawahish. What is that? And here, what is it? Huh? Huh? The, 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 the zina, fornication, or drinking alcohol, or he's transgressing the rights, violating the honor or the blood or the property or the wealth of somebody un unlawfully, or other than that, then it's an obligation to, to reprimand him. According to the ability, he mentioned the hadith. Then he mentioned details. The details is what we, what we need in, in our communities, in our lives, and the details of the straight path. Coming to the straight path is one thing. That's general guidance. Traversing upon the straight path is another thing, and that requires... Detailed guidance, detailed guidance, detailed guidance. He says, 
if the individual, if the man, he was hidden, meaning his sin is not apparent, and if in kana a rajul mutasatiran bidalika, walaysa mu'adinan lahu, if he was hidden with that and he's covering his sins and what he's doing and he's not displaying it or making it outwardly apparent, he said, Ankara alayhi sirran wa satara alayhi. The individual, he will reprimand him in private and he will cover his sin. He will reprimand him in private and he will, he will cover his fault. He will cover his fault. Huh? How many times somebody find out about a sin of his brother and he's the first one to push the button? Cut, paste, cut, paste. All of the, 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 what, contacts. Put them, put them, put them on, on and spread it to all of them. So-and-so did this and so-and-so said that. Oh, didn't you know? Oh, didn't you hear? Sister, sister did this or the brother did that. Like, like this. If it is something that is hidden, what do you do for him? You hide it. You, do you let him go? You don't let him go. What do you, ankara alayhi, sirran. That you reprimand him and you advise him in private and you cover his fault. You cover his fault. Why? Kama qala nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Just like the Prophet, he said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Man satara abdan, satarahu allahu fi dunya wal akhirah. That whoever covers the, 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 the errors, the mistakes, the sins of a slave, of a Muslim. Man satara musliman, come in the hadith of, of Muslim. Now whoever covers a Muslim's fault, then Allah will cover him in, the, in this life and the hereafter. In this life and the hereafter. So then again, why would he reprimand him and why would he cover his fault? He reprimand him for the sake of Allah Azza wa that has proceeded and he will cover his fault, hoping for his faults to be covered, to be covered, to be covered. So this is the way that he would do it. When would he cover his fault? When would he reprimand him in, in, in private? If the person's crime, if the person's sin is done between him and Allah, it's not something that is apparent. It's not something that is made public. And he fell into a sin, major sin. But he did that in a manner that's not publicized. That's not publicized. Then he will be, he will be reprimanded. Naam. He will be advised. Naam. He could even be scolded. Naam. But how would it be? Sirran. In private. And what would he have do after that? Tell everybody, I advise so and so and so and so and so and so and he will cover his fault. He will cover his fault. He will cover the fault of his brother. He will, why? Because he wants good for him. This is the good manners. This is the reality of good manners. These are some very great details with regards to the good manners that people clear, the people of knowledge clarify. And then he says, this is the case. Except in the case that his evil now, maybe he's quiet by himself or he's not publicized, but his evil now is going to affect others. His evil now is becoming, uh, is, is, is becoming to the extent that others are being affected by it. Yeah? Now he says, except for in this case. And the one who his evil is affecting others, he, he, one, he must be stopped. His transgression must be stopped. His transgression must be stopped. If a person prohibited this individual privately and it did not benefit him and it did not cause him to stop, then he will uh, do what is needed to stop him from boycotting him and leaving him. And other than that, if that is beneficial uh, in the deen. He continues, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, after clarifying the issue of the one who his sin is hidden. His sin is hidden. So the origin is that he will cover it unless the, 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 it starts to transgress. Or it starts to go beyond him if his sin, his sin was hidden in, originally and then it come to find out now others are being affected by him and his harm is extending to others and the likes like this then he will be reprimanded he will be clarified it will be clarified and it would, one would do whatever it takes in order to repress and to stop his harm from boycotting him and other than that if he says either can and if that is beneficial in the deen again going back to the issue of al-masalih uh, wal-mafasid Naam al masarih wal mafasid, looking to the benefits and the harms of that, if it is beneficial in the deen. He said, Amma idha adhara rajul al munkarat, wajab al inkaru alayhi alaniyatan. As for in the case of a person who is going to display outwardly and apparently evils, he's going to do them outwardly, then it's incumbent and obligation to reprimand him outwardly in public. The one who publicly and publicizes his sins, he will be reprimanded in public. He will be reprimanded in public. He said, Walam, yab qalahu. And there's no ghibah for this person. 
the one who was outwardly apparent, and even the people of knowledge I mentioned any, were on the issue now of the Fajr. But before that, the Mubtadi, likewise, la ghiba tali wala lil Fajr. There's no ghiba for the one who is an innovator. To say that so and so is an innovator and he calls to innovation, that's not backbiting. Yusuf Qaradallah, he's misguided and he calls to innovation in khuruj, that's not backbiting, rather, that's nus. The one who does that sincerely for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jalla and mentions these innovators by their names like that in order for the people to be aware of them. This is a type of this is a type of jihad and this is good and this and there's no ghibah for that individual. Likewise for the one who is an apparent sinner, so and so, so and so he sells alcohol in a store and you say his name. You say that's not that's not backbiting. No doubt. Would he like that to be, to be mentioned? Arghiba and dhikru akhaka bimayakra. Does he like that? The ghibah is to mention your brother something he doesn't like, but, but he doesn't have ghibah no more. He, he, he left his right with regards to that by, by displaying sins outwardly and publicly publicizing his sins and the likes like this without any shame. He says, Lam yabqa lahu ghibatun. Wa wajaba an yu'aqab mu'alaniyatan bima yaradi'uhu an thalika min hajirin wa ghayrihi. And it's an obligation to, that he's punished apparently outwardly. And in order for him to back away from that and to leave that and to refrain from that, by, uh, by uh, boycotting him and leaving him. And other than that, he said, فَلَا يُسَلَّمْ عَلَيْهِ So you wouldn't give him salam. وَلَا يُرَدُّ, ولا يرد عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ And is, the salam is not returned to him. إِذَا كَانَ الْفَاعِلِ And then he mentioned again, and he, very important, how many times he mentioned this? فَإِذَا كَانَ الْفَاعِلُ لِذَلِكَ مُتَمَكِّنًا مِنْ ذَلِكَ مِنْ غَيْرِ مَفْسَدَةٍ رَاجِحًا and that he will not give him salam and he will not return the salam to him if the one who is doing this, he's strong and he has the ability and th this is not going to bring about a greater harm. And this is not going to bring about a greater harm. So the one who was known for, for publicizing his sins and he, if by not returning his salam or not giving him salam at all whatsoever, he said salam, you don't say nothing back. He said salam, you don't say nothing back. If this is going to benefit him and it's not going to cause more harm or, or it's not going to cause more harm, then it's legislated. If, if it causes him to now get his people and, to, and, to, and to, uh, to bring harm to you or to harm to the people of the Sunnah and the likes like this, then it's not, it's not legislated. Or if it causes him to go further into sin and further into transgression, then it's not legislated. When is it legislated? Uh, if the person, he has the ability to do that and it's going to uh, not bring about a greater harm. And it's not going to bring about a greater harm. And this requires, Barakallah Fikum, to go back to the other principle with regards to the good manners. Whoever believes in Allah in the last day, let him say goodness or be silent. How does he do that? How can somebody say that which is good or be silent? Hmm. How can you say something that is good or be silent? You have to think before you speak. You have to think in way of that. The only way somebody can say something good or be silent, he has to think what is he going to say first? Is it good? Is it good? If it's good, he speaks. If it's not good, he's silent. So likewise, this person right here, if he's going to make the hajj, if he's going to reprimand, if he's going to be harsh, he has to think before he does that to see, is this going to bring about a greater harm? He has to look to other affairs. If I do this, what's going to happen because of that? What will be the repercussions? Are the repercussions that possibly, inshallah, he's going to learn and take reprimand and benefit from that? Or at least nobody's going to be harmed from that? Or there's not going to be a greater harm from that? And then he would do it. But if you look at it and you say, okay, well, if I do this, and this is going to happen, and this is going to happen, and this is going to happen, it's going to be a big issue. Ah, now it's going to be worse. So then he will not do it. He will not do it. So he has to think before he acts. He has to think before he speaks. Somebody who's going to weigh up the goods and look into the outcome of the affairs. And if this is what is the, 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 those traits that that one companion he was given. Al hilmu wa anad. Al hilmu wa anad. He's going to be forbearing and he's going to look into the outcome of his statements and his deeds. And if they're good, he will perform them. And if not, then he will, he will wait and he will wait for a better opportunity. Wallahu alam. Wa sallallahu ala Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.